Fallout. Coming on TV? What? Me worry? I don't think so. That's right, friends. I am the man you may know as E from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and I'm here to talk a little bit about Fallout. Not the game, and not practice. We're not talking about practice. We're not talking about practice. We're talking about the show, Fallout. It's coming to Amazon of all places. How does that make you feel? That's right. We're going to have the first look at Fallout. We're going to take t- check out some teasers, talk about some things, because there's a lot of people who need to get some dogs out there because they're a little worried, they're a little scared that this isn't going to be good. Me, I don't judge anything until I actually see it. And unlike other reviewers, I actually watch this stuff. So there's a couple reasons to be worried, a couple reasons not to be worried. Reason number, but the images, I'm going to say, look pretty okay. I'm pretty okay with where this is going so far. So let's take a little tour on the exclusive Vanity Fair. First look at... Fallout. Ooh, uh, we have a Westworld creator. That's problem number one. Westworld season one could be one of the greatest first seasons of television ever made. And then, spoiler alert, it goes down real hard and real fast to the point where they had to do a soft reboot and then nobody watched it anymore. It absolutely tanked. They took one of the most interesting premises from Michael Crichton and updated a sorely needed updated uh, like a movie from like the 60s that really needed to be updated maybe it was the 70s I don't remember and uh yeah and they wrote it right into the ground so here we have Fallout and Fallout looks kind of interesting it's going to be starring Ella Purnell and she looks pretty good as a uh a vault dweller like it's going to be interesting because normies aren't going to know what to make of this Normies, hell, I must be a normie because I haven't played any Fallout games except for Fallout 76, which I didn't start playing until like three years into it, and I played it for about, I'm going to say about a year. It was a lot of fun. Interesting lore, a lot of, it's a big open sandbox, and people are like, oh, what's the plot going to be? Is it going to be woke? Blah, 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 blah. Who knows, man? The uh, first season might be just fine. Who we don't know. Nobody knows. Amazon's so hit or miss. That's the other thing that's interesting. It just depends. You either have Lord of the Ring Dang Dongs, which is terrible. One of the some of the worst television I've ever seen. (laughs) The most money I've ever seen spent on a show that just made not a damn lick of sense. Or you get things like what was it, the kill list and or uh the one with Chris Pratt and, and then Reacher. Reacher's really good. They home, they're the home to Invincible. Um, Invincible's not perfect, but it's a pretty darn good show. And yeah, oh, it's the Terminal List. It's not the Kill List. The, the Terminal List with Chris Pratt's really good. Really enjoy that one. So you just don't know what you're going to get. You have no idea. You can get all sorts of crazy stuff on there. So this talks a little bit about the series. It's going to come out on April 12th, so we have a little bit of time. But for those who aren't familiar with the story, there's a nuclear war that breaks out across Earth in the year 2077, which was like an era of robots and hover cars. Imagine like what we thought the 1960s or 1940s was thought the future was going to look like with like hover packs and flying cars. Well, that's all kind of come to fruition, but then the world ends. And there's a lot going on. There's mutated humans. There's monsters. There's all sorts of stuff. There's cryptid creatures. Pretty interesting. And it kind of takes, like, some technology is still there. Some's not there. Um, It's pretty, I think there's going to be some pretty cool stuff that you guys are going to like. Now, people are nervous because Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy are the ones who developed this. And, And like I said, Westworld Season 1 could be the greatest thing on television that's ever happened yet the rest of it is pretty garbage uh you get ella purnell who is from yellow jackets i feel like i've seen her in other stuff and she lives in a subterranean vault 
for her entire life and then comes out into this absolute hellscape, which will be interesting. Uh, there's going to be all sorts of weird stuff. So we'll see exactly how all of this plays out. It's definitely way different from The Last of Us. There's, it's, it's, it's more, it's a little more structured than Last of Us. It's not as like, th there's a structure to the world that has reoccurred, um, and and what they're doing is they're saying, well, what, they they were like, what what do we do? Should we go with like Fallout Three or like a specific story? And they're like, now nah, we want to do our own thing. We just want to place it in the world of this. So I think. That's actually a good idea. So they can take the best ideas and they're not like married to something and then people can't compare it to the game and be like, oh, this is terrible. Because they clearly have some things from the game that we're going to see, which is like one of these things. So you see all these robot dudes, right? They look pretty cool. They little look a little copy paste, which isn't exactly the spirit of fallout, but that's okay. Uh, but that's the Brotherhood of Steel. Those are all people in like mech suits, which is really cool. There's definitely, like, and there's a hierarchy to it. They're like knights, and they have squires, and blah, blah, blah. I just think this stuff looks cool. You know, I'm going to give it a good old college try. Apparently, they 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 seem to have worked with Todd Howard, who was the director of, two, of 2008's Fallout 3 and 2015's Fallout 4. I mean, Bethesda's kind of crap, but, you know, to be honest with you, my first experience was with Fallout was Fallout 76, and I like the Appalachia setting. I think that's Fallout 76. I think that's the game I played, but I played a game in Appalachia, and as a fan of the Appalachians, who, so, who lives kind of near the Appalachians myself, as a good old-fashioned coal miner right here, coming from that coal mining blood, not at all, but I do appreciate you mining my coal for me. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed that setting. I thought it was pretty cool. So I could, I could take that too. I don't remember any spaceships being in it, but sure. Maybe there's spaceships, whatever, man. I don't know. The Brotherhood of Steel is, seems pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I barely understood the story that I was playing when I played the game. So you wouldn't call me like, I'm not a fanboy. So that's where maybe my expectations are a little bit different. But to me, this looks pretty cool. This dude in a giant mech suit standing next to this other... That's exactly what I'm looking for. People in mech suits. And it doesn't have to be the whole time. Um, they did say here... This is this is a direct quote from them. Uh, I did not want them to do... This is coming from Howard himself. He said, I didn't want anyone to do an interpretation of the existing story we already did. There was a lot of pitches. Like, should this be Fallout 3? And it was like, we told that story... I don't have a lot of interest in seeing this translate. It would be best for someone to telling a unique Fallout story, which is good because well, uh, Fallout has a lot of uh, good world building. You you have an existing world that you could do do things with. So it seems like it's going to follow like four different characters through their arcs and all this. I uh, hopefully it's mostly Ella Purnell's story, but we'll see how that looks. But I think the sets look. It looks like they spent some money on this, so it looks all right. There's a lot. It's a big ensemble cast. Maybe people die. Maybe people don't. Uh, one of the, the highlights will be Walton Goggins. People are super excited to see him as the ghoul. He's a uh, bounty hunter in this game. And he, his prosthetics look pretty cool. And he looks like it matches the characters. So hopefully he gets to do some good acting in there. They said they really wanted to make sure that they saw him in his face. I don't know why they were like prosthetics designer who worked on Leonardo's Caprio and killers in the flower moon. I don't know what prosthetics they did in that. I'd like him to tell me he did something else than the prosthetics and killer of the flower moon, but sure. So, uh, it'll be pretty interesting to see. I think personally kind of excited. Not going to lie. I I'm going to look forward to it with, um, positivity because everybody else has been like looks crappy look like they're gonna talk about current day things look stop poo-pooing everything until it's out let's see it and judge it when it comes out all i can do is judge based on what they've said which seems normal i'm not gonna read too far in anything they said i'm gonna give the creators of westworld one little shot here hey if they give us a great first season maybe that expands into something better and if it's terrible we won't watch it it's easy we can and you, maybe my descriptions of it will be more enjoyable than watching the show itself 
Who knows? But I thank you for paying attention and checking out something I wanted to talk about because I'm not a Fallout fanboy, but I do like Fallout on some level. I think the the world is cool. It's a cool sandbox to play in. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Excited, not excited? It's Amazon Prime, so everybody's got it. So everybody can watch it. So with any luck, people will be interested and see it and check it out. It'll be fun. Let's do it together. And we'll talk about it. Let's talk about it. Anyway, catch our full-length audio podcast. We talked about it before. It's called Our Reviews Will Kill You. You can catch it here, our home on YouTube, Friday nights. There's a live stream, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to catch it again or repeat, you can check it out on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all those great places and more. We'd love to have you come along for the ride because we do enjoy you because you make us so happy. You make me so happy. Anyway, love y'all, but I'm on to the next one.